Hey everybody, it's Murgle, and today in this one we decided to cover a little bit about getting the gold for your first mount when Classic comes out. Now I know the release date hasn't been announced, but surely with all the news that's been coming up about it recently, it has to be just around the corner. So let's just jump right into it. So the first mount that you're going to be able to obtain in Classic won't happen until level 40. Up until that point, you'll probably be hoofing it all over Azeroth. However, as it so happens, there's also a very good chance that by the time you hit level 40, you probably won't even have the funds to afford the mount that you're desperately hoping will give your feet a rest. In fact, chances are, after all the money you've spent on leveling up your skills and repairing the armor that you have died in 6,000 times, you'll have a whopping 10 copper to your name. Now the mounts themselves are cheap, it's the 100 gold pieces you have to fork over for the writing skill. Thankfully, this skill is reduced in cost by the reputation of the location which you're going to be purchasing the skill from. So it's only going to cost you around 80, 80 gold. Now as for accruing the funds, well that's what we're here to discuss. I've always been an avid fan of gold farming, so hopefully these small little tips help you out. Can't guarantee by the time you're 40 you're going to have the money you need, but maybe these will at least help you get a bit of gold starting off. So step number one, when the game first comes out, pick up a gathering profession immediately alongside a crafting profession. But if you think you're going to be playing a more casual and slow pace, I would go with two gathering professions. And we'll discuss why. The reason being is early on in the game, especially for the first two to three weeks, no one is actually going to have very much gold anyway, simply because mobs don't really drop that much funds to begin with. So having a gathering profession such as mining and blacksmithing means you'll be able to start leveling up your skill by yourself early on in the game. Now the actual money making doesn't come till later, but crafting skills played a huge part in the game. I mean they always have of course, but in classic there's so many different types of armor that are simply a necessity to complete in certain types of content. Like much of the fire resistance gear, which you need to do molten core, is made through crafting professions. So this means if you're one of the first few people to level 60, and you've been collecting all of your materials and leveling the professions alongside that, you'll be able to make decent sales off of people who are trying to rush Molten Core as soon as possible. But they chose to level instead of leveling their professions alongside the leveling, they just sped level up. It's a long term investment, but will definitely help you, I'd say pretty early game. Now if you're more of a casual player, I definitely recommend simply going along with two gathering professions. This comes from the fact that you won't be getting in on the early crafting gear sales, so you won't be able to make huge amounts really early on, but the people who rushed to level 60 and ignored their professions entirely are going to need bucket loads of leveling materials because they're just going to be trying to rush their professions up at level 60, so they're going to pay a ton of, stuff, ton of money for stuff off the auction house to get their skills up fast. You'll be making all kinds of sales just from selling the materials that you've gathered. Now, I would say that the gathering plus crafting profession, this individual probably has a higher potential to get really big money, but it's going to be unstable, especially early on with prices fluctuating a lot. The double gathering type of person, if you're looking for a more stable and, you know, established economy, even though prices will be up and down, you'll be guaranteed to make money. People are always going to buy materials. Selling gear can be a, a kind of an unstable market, but has really huge margins to make a lot of profit. So it's up to you which one you decide to go with. Now for number two, in terms of things I wouldn't do, I definitely say don't vendor anything. Especially if you don't know what you're selling to the vendor. When Classic comes back, there will be so many types of items that seem strange, odd, or completely useless. I highly recommend just simply saving it and checking on a database like Wowhead just to see what it is if you don't know what it is. Many things will have a value and a use. Don't just chalk them up to being junk and quickly dumping them to clear out your uh, bag space. One of the biggest examples, and a very fond item to me, is the Hyacinth Mawcaw. This item is by far the rarest item that was obtainable in Classic, excluding specific items like the one-time only Ragnaros Necklace or the Black Karaji Mount. The Hyacinth Mawcaw originally only dropped off the pirates located in Southern Stranglethorn Vale. Alongside this, the same pirates have an extremely rare chance to drop the First Mate's Hat. Now in the current version of WoW, the Hyacinth Mawcaw and the First Mate's Hat can be obtained off anything in Stranglethorn. 
but when Classic returns, they should once again be limited to these pirates alone. And to top it off, the Hyacinth Makaw was not always an epic item. In fact, it was simply a white common item, just like most pets you'd buy at a vendor. The rarity, though, is astonishing for both of these items. The parrot is a 1 in 10,000 drop rate off of the pirates. I can confirm this because back in Wrathel Lich King, when it was upgraded to an epic item, it was the first time I really decided to hunt something rare in the game. I thought it would be fun. It took me 28,000 pirates to obtain one. I ended up selling it back then for 25,000 gold, which with inflation is very expensive. Now I'm not saying you would fetch this price for it in Classic, that'd be absurd, but it will go f for a decent price because it is going to be extraordinarily rare and being a white common item, you might simply confuse it with a useless pet that you accidentally just bought off a vendor and you try and sell it back. So I can only express Inform yourself before you decide to do anything with something you find in your travels. If you know it's junk and you're sure of it, get rid of it. That's fine. But make sure it's junk. Another big one, try to refrain from equipping stuff like stray greens if you don't care that too much about a small stat increase. The reason being, again, it kind of falls in with the previous topic, like the first mate's hat is a green item, but it's also extremely rare. Is that small stat increase worth all the gold that it might be worth to some collector? Everything you pick up might have a pretty high price and you simply don't know it. There are so many items in the game that are considered like best in slot for twinks, such as a few random greens that drop in the world, but they roll perfect stats, so you get a perfect stat 4-4 or something. Very good for a twink. Now for those of you that are confused what twinking is, and I figure I should clarify because it's not really all that common anymore in recent years, but a twink is a character that purposely equips extremely strong gear so they can lock themselves to a certain bracket, like PvP combat wise, just to have fun. So a lot of this gear exists and may drop randomly in the world, but could have an extremely high price tag for a twink looking to max out their account. A perfect example is Shadowfang Keep. Maybe you decide to run Shadowfang Keep to complete a quest while you're leveling up. You happen to see a Shadowfang weapon drop and you win the roll. Now you're a level 22 rogue and it sure seems to tempting to equip it because hey that's a great weapon. Sure looks juicy, definitely good stats, would fare you decently for a couple levels. Well, I would highly recommend don't equip it. That short gain in, is not going to be worth it because you're going to level up, not super fast, but I mean you're going to out level that weapon quickly. And that item alone could fetch you anywhere from probably 60 to 100 gold when classic releases. And that alone probably could afford your mount. Twinks will pay bucket loads for items that will make them just a bit stronger, but it can be very fun to do, so I understand the joy in doing Twinkie. And lastly, another huge one. Be on the lookout for people who might be offering a fairly high reward for a certain service or tip or something like that. A good example again falls in line with Twinks. A lot of time, Twinks will start at a very low level, usually around level 10 for example, when they begin their Twinking journey. The reason being is there isn't a way to freeze your experience gained while playing in Classic, so you can... you always end up leveling. But Battlegrounds do not award XP when you're doing them in classic so it's not really that big of a deal. So by starting at level 10 they typically need a high level to escort them around to kill things. It also ensures that they get way less experience when something dies and they need help doing you know dungeons and things like that. They need to do this though because they have to get whatever they're hunting maybe a specific boss drop before they hit the level that they're going to stop at so you may need to do a hundred runs of a dungeon because you're going for one little piece but got really unlucky so they start out very very early that way by the time they hit level 19 they have everything they need usually when they begin these grinds they'll uh, discuss a really big tip or reward or something it might not sound like a lot but you know I used to run twinks through dead mines and I would get like five gold per run it wasn't a huge amount but if you, if you get like 10 runs, that's 50 gold. That's already halfway to the cost of the mount. At level 40, this would be an extremely good pay for you. For anything you could do, really, 5 gold is, is a pretty good pay. So, 
I think it's worth it to check on it. If you check in the trade chat, there's probably somebody going to be asking for help doing some quest or something, and they're going to be tipping well. Obviously, you can do these things for free, but you need that money for them out because it's really hard to get, so <laughs> be on the lookout is all I can say. Anywho, maybe these tips are obvious, or maybe I gave you something that is worthwhile to think about when you start. Who knows? Just realize that getting the first mount will be a very big challenge for you. Remember to check regularly if you get an item that you simply don't know what it is. I can't express enough. Just make sure you're always looking into what you have and making sure that it's not useless. Because for all you know, it could be worth a small fortune. Prices will vary a lot this time around in Classic simply because we live in a much more informed era. People aren't going to be going in completely clueless because... Most people that are going to be playing Classic have already experienced an MMO, so they know how the markets work, they know how to search things online, like, it's going to be a much more informed era this time around. And this won't be most people's first experience when it comes to MMO, so, just be on the lookout, be smart, don't scam yourself early on in the game. Anyways, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope this was somewhat helpful, and I will see you again real soon. Bye bye